Good day, my scholars. Welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT past question for the subject biology, the year 2016. So stay with us, don't go anywhere, because we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel where we are solving the Jam CBT past question and in this particular clip we are solving questions 37 to 50. So join me as we solve question 37. The rate of transpiration is not affected by what? Okay, at first we should know that plants also remove the excess water through the process of transpiration. Okay, so um, factors that affect transpiration you talk about um, light intensity you talk about humidity you talk about air movement or wind you talk about temperature you talk about also the size of the stomata pulse so i've we've listed or we've listened to some of the key factors that affect transpiration of course option a is not a factor that affects transpiration so the correct option is option a the weight of the stomata pulse does not affect the rate of transpiration option a is very correct Question 38. The crossing of individuals of the same species with different genetic characters, that is crossbreeding, okay? I'm talking about uh, polygenic inheritance, you know, when you see a particular physical trait and it's as a result of incomplete dominance uh, between um, different genes, right from the parents, okay? Uh, like for instance, you talk about your height, your weight. Uh, your skin color and what have you. We have non disjunction okay? This tells you that um, there is a kind of a failure of proper separation of homologous um, chromosome, okay, doing, um, doing cell division. Yeah, this is what it's all about. Then you talk about inbreeding, that is, you're talking about um, that meeting between closely related individuals because you want to maintain a particular trait, okay? So the correct option here is option A for cross breeding. Number 39, the hereditary characters in plants and animals are located on the world. Okay, um, this question deserves lots of caution when attempting it. Okay, the gene is that basic unit of hereditary. Okay, um, just like cell is the basic unit of life. Okay, so just take note of that. So, um, this gene that carries this hereditary information, okay, it is actually located on the chromosome. Okay, and that particular spot where it occupies on the chromosome, that spot is referred to as a locus. Okay, gene um, sits or is situated on the locus on this chromosome, and this chromosome is located in the cell's nucleus. Okay, so you can see the arrangement now. Um, a gene carries is a basic unit of hereditary, and it is located on the chromosome. Okay, and the chromosome is found in the nucleus of a cell. Correct. Now, so the hereditary characters in plants and animals are located where? They are located on the chromosome that houses the gene. So the correct option here is option C for chromosomes. Don't forget that these My School tools are readily available for you. All you just have to do, click on the link in the description below. You'll be taken to the My School website where you can get the My School mobile app or the My School software for just a token of 1,000 Naira. All right, and you just have to have a wonderful jam CBT experience all for yourself. So we have question 40. The arrangement of ovules attached to the sides of a syncarpous ovary with a single chamber is referred to as what? Okay, so um, at first when you talk about um, arrangement of ovules, you are talking about placentation okay, in implants. All right, um, so um, let's let's um, sort out some things. First, we are talking about a syncarpous ovary. Okay, so the syncarpous epistils that I can point out here, we have this free central placentation, we have axial placentation, we have a parietal placentation. For marginal placentation, it is a monocarpus. Okay, it is monocarpus to put. So uh, for free central, an example of free central should be the carnation. All right, um, axial placentation, you're talking about tomato. Um, parietal placentation, you're talking about purple, carica papaya. So the correct option here is option C for parietal 
placentation. We believe this content is very helpful to you. Please, all you just have to do for us and for you is to make sure you hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alerts as soon as we upload the next video clip just for you. Number 41. When sickle cell carrier marries a normal woman, okay, the probability of them having a normal offspring is what? So we just have to... Um, we can use the Punnett square, but we'll just use a simple crossing, okay? We have, um, we're talking about a carrier. So let me just take for instance, um, probably this, okay? Then this, this is normal. Let's just use this example and walk along with. So if we have a crossing here, we have A, A, all right? We still have the A and the A, okay? Then we have this. We have the AS as well at this point. We have the AS. Okay, so we can see the offspring, the probability that um, there will be carriers that's 50% or half of the total children. Then they are going to have normal children that is also 50%. Uh, percent. So if we refer back to the question given to us, the question says that um, we should check out for the probability of them having a normal offspring, okay, that probability is 50% or half or 0.5. So the correct option here is option C for 0.5. Number 42. In which of the following groups of vertebrates is parental care mostly, okay, mostly exhibited? All right, talking about harvest, we're talking about beds. Okay, the reptalia, we're talking about reptiles like snakes, like lizards, and what have you. We're talking about the amphibia, you're talking about some um, toad frogs. We're talking about mammalians, we're talking about man, you're talking about um, rats, okay. Uh, we're talking about monkeys, all right. So, um, in which of the following groups of vertebrates is parental care mostly exhibited, mostly exhibited from the context of the options provided, okay? The answer is mammalia, mammals, okay, for man. Uh, also, you can see parental care in aves, but it is mostly exhibited when it comes to mammalia, okay? So the correct option here that is mostly fitted is option D for mammalia. Question 43. An example of a non-biodegradable pollutant is what? Okay, um, when talking about something is biodegradable, this is non biodegradable. When something is biodegradable, okay, it means that uh, it's a kind of organic material that can be broken down, okay, to give you carbon dioxide, water, um, other simple um, molecule, organic molecules, okay, um, and that can include um, dung, bones, woods. Okay, then the non biodegradable, you should know that this includes the materials like paints like chemicals like rubber like these things cannot be um, broken down all right or that certain um, action of microorganisms or what have you so the simple option here is just option c for ceramics okay so option c ceramics is the answer question 44 the bacteria that is found in the root nodules of leguminous plants is what Okay, we have um, two types of nitrogen fixing organisms. We have the free livings like the Clostridium and the Azotobacter. Okay, and we have the symbiotic ones like the Rhizobium. It lives in, it is found in the nodules of this leguminous plant. Okay, this is what it does. It actually derives the energy to do this conversion from the breakdown of carbohydrates in the host tissue. Okay, so it um, uses the um, gaseous nitrogen, okay, and uses it to produce um, ammonia compound, amino compounds and um, proteins, which it shares with the host plants. So the correct answer is option B for rhizobium. So the bacteria that is found in the root nodules of leguminous plants is rhizobium under the symbiotic relationship. Don't forget to use the link in the description below. Clicking it takes you to the My School website where you can ask your questions right now and our solution providers are willing and ready to help you out. So join me as we tackle question 45. Which of these organisms partly digest its food extracellularly? Okay, so when you talk about um, extracellular digestion, that tells you that there is a digestive tract, okay, and there is um, a kind of release of chemicals or enzymes to help 
this particular organism to digest its food before it goes in as nutrients into the cells. Why for intracellular digestion, okay, there is absence of digestive tracts. Okay, so let's go by the most viable option here. Yeah? Which of these organisms partly digest its food extracellularly? The most viable option here yeah, is option C for spiders. So, perhaps you have better steps, explanations, or solutions you would like to share regarding any of the questions we have solved so far. Please would like to know. All you have to do for us is to use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanation you would recommend. Number 46. Strong shot and conical beak to pick and cross seeds is an adaptive feature of what's bed, okay? is an adaptive feature found in weaver bed okay other example includes the finch okay we talk about the sparrow where their main meal or their major diet includes um, seed okay they have to be able to crack the seed and that requires this sort of bill or beak so it has to be strong short and um, conical all right so and sometimes we refer to this kind of bed as granivorous uh, birds okay so looking at all and door and hawk you will see that um, their meal is majorly flesh okay and that tells you the kind of um, big they are going to have that is going to be um, good enough to tear this flesh so the correct option here is option c the weaver bed as strong shot and conical beak to pick and crush seeds okay just as an just as one of its adaptive uh, features option c is very correct number 47 the part followed by hair as it passes through the lungs in mammals is what okay so we're going to take this as its presentation starting from the external into the internal okay so either it's through your nose or through your mouth whichever way you breathe in okay it's going to enter in through the trash or the windpipe okay then from the windpipe it branches it moves or it gets you to the thorax so now in the thorax we have two bronchus or bronchi for plural one bronchus enters into one lung and the other into the other lungs okay then at the end of um, all we can say we can properly say that um for each bronchus okay it has um, smaller branches all right and these smaller branches they are referred to as bronchioles and these bronchioles they are by 0.2 millimeters in diameters okay so at the end of each bronchioles that is where we have the alveolus or the alveoli they are the tiny air sac this is where gaseous exchange actually take place so the correct order is from the trachea to the bronchus or the bronchi for plural then into the bronchioles then into the alveoli okay so the correct option is option c number 48 in which of the following species is the biomass of an individual the smallest okay i'm talking about some um, biomass you're talking about the total quantity of a particular organism in a given area so uh, when we look at um, all of these organisms okay this is tilapia fish this is a gamma lizard say so this is a buffo we're talking about frogs and toads and this is spirogyra spelling is white spirogyra okay so um, we are talking about um a talophyte belonging to the phylum of talophytes under the kingdom plants or plantae okay and um, these are green algae so you should know that their total quantity or their mass just to say or their weight okay from the time of biomass should be the smallest in comparison of the options or organisms provided here so in which of the following species is the biomass of an individual the smallest that is for option d the spiral gyra number 49 the part of the mammalian hair responsible for maintenance of balance is the what okay it's actually the vestibular system okay it comprises of the utricle the circle and the three semicircular canals okay all of these they work alongside um, the cerebellum okay that part of the brain to maintain body balance okay so the correct option here is option d the vestibular system number 50 which of the organisms represented are notable agricultural pests okay um, which of these actually um, become nuisance or actually nuisance to agriculture okay yeah harvest and what have you so let's identify this organism 
organism high can be identified as a grasshopper or if you want to put it a locust this is a cockroach okay um, this is a caterpillar all right um, that's for uh, one of the format formative um, stages for butterfly and this tells you a formative stage of the insect mosquito so we know mosquito is not a direct um, pest to agriculture um, cockroach not really okay but the notable ones like the question indicated notable that will be i and iv grasshopper and uh, caterpillar so the correct option is i and iv and that is found in option b so option b is the correct option we've come to the end of this segment but there are more video clips to come all you just have to do to be kept in the loop is to hit the like button also click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as we release the next video clip